Hello, welcome back to the Cricket Nerds. Today, Benji and myself again talking about the England versus India series, previewing the fourth test match. So we're going to go through our thoughts on team selections, um, sort of predictions, those sorts of th- those sorts of things. So stick around and let's just get straight into it. Benji, let's go to India news, I think, first. Okay. There's been a few interesting developments. Some things that we were kind of expecting are that Jasper Brumra um, is going to be rested for this uh, four test match. Um, and also Kara Hall, unfortunately, uh, isn't going to be playing the game. He misses out carrying on through that injury. And it's likely that he's not going to play the fifth test match as well. Um, so blow for them based on his performance in the first test. But what do you reckon... Who do you reckon is going to replace Bumrah? Who who do you reckon could come in yeah. for, for him? <clears throat> I mean, first of all, it gives England some hope, right? Yeah, uh, yeah a little bit. <laughs> uh, Bumrah being out and also Kara Hall not coming back in. So I think there are really four options. Um, you've got the two seeming options of Mukesh Kumar and Akash Deep. I'd be really surprised if we saw Mukesh Kumar again. Uh, so maybe India would give Akash Deep a go, seeing as he's not particularly experience in test match i don't know if he's ever played the test match but before anyway ever. Um, so it would be his debut so we know you know he's a good player we've seen him play for for rcb for the last a few years good player good bowler um my ha- thoughts however it very much depends on what the pitch is going to look like um at ranchi so if it's going to be more of a turning wicket they might uh, go for that extra spin option, you know, with England have gone with one seamer in, in one test already. So they might just stick with Mohammed Siraj and maybe bring Axar Patel back into the side because he does lengthen that batting order. Um, he always gets wickets against England. Uh, I, I, and then the other one is, is probably Washington Sundar, but I'd be very surprised if we do see him in the squad. Um, I think he's more of a filler at this point. Uh, he again has played really well in tests and potentially could get get his shot but it does seem like he's very much down the pecking order when you've got the likes of Ashwin and Jadeja playing maybe if Ashwin wasn't playing we'd see a Washington Sundar um but yeah so my money is probably on Akash Deep is what I think I don't know what do you reckon well they've said there's a few cracks in the pitch already like a couple days out of the of the test starting, which is obviously going to show that the pitch is going to deteriorate as it goes through. Um, we don't really know like how, I don't know much about whether it's a, it's a particularly dusty pitch or there's a bit of grass on the wicket. All I know is there's a couple of cracks. Um, so if you're playing in Australia, you'd probably pick an extra seamer, uh, whether that's the case with the Indian conditions or not. I'm not too sure. Um, but I would probably go with, with the seamer, whether it's Akash Deep or Mukesh Kumar, I'm not sure. Maybe they'll go with Mukesh Kumar, give him another opportunity in this series. But yeah, Akash Deep's first class record of late has been so good. Um, and yeah. we've seen how well it worked bringing someone like Safraz Khan in, who has that brilliant first class record. Um, why not try it with Akash Deep? He's <clears throat> averaging something ridiculous with the ball. So, um, yeah. and, and he's he's a decent prospect. So, Definitely give him a shot. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see. In, in, terms, terms, of Kale, in terms of Kale Rahul then, yeah. um, who do you think... Well, obviously, he's not coming into the side, um, but Patadar had a pretty pretty much a poor test match. Do you reckon they'll give yeah. him another go or try something different? I'm not sure. Um, I don't see why not. I think with Patadar, um Unless they bring in Devdutt Padakal to bat at number four, but really, like Padakal's the type of player that you really want him to be opening the batting. Um, mm-hmm. So I can't really see them making a change there. I think they'll probably go with the same um, top seven. So Rohit, Jaiswell, Gil, Pathadar, Safraz, Jadeja, Jarrell would be my uh, guess for the top seven. So it's really just a looking at who who those bowlers are let's yeah. be honest the bowling uh the batting hasn't been the problem for india i mean the bowling's not been a problem either really no. but the batting has been fine yeah. um 
if anything, yeah, it's 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 been the bowling that's been more of a problem. Um, I think Drew of Durrell as well probably stays in over KS Barrett. I think he yeah. had a really good test match. I think he kept phenomenally well. Um, so yeah, I mean, I I probably think there's no need to go for an extra seamer because the three seamers are already doing fantastically. I think Kuldee definitely uh, keeps keeps his place. Um, it seems that an extra seam is probably going to be uh, overkill at Ranji. And seeing that Mukesh Kumar bowled what are essentially throwdowns in the second test, in my opinion, I would be surprised if, if, if he came in. But, you know, it's India. They always like to... Uh, to to throw caution to the wind and do something that that is 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 um unexpected but yeah i think we'll we'll see akash deep that that'll be just that one change yeah. so um news from england then um it seems like they're sticking to their guns um there may be a bit of moving around with the bowling and it seems that ollie robinson might be in line for a recall back into the side, which personally I'm quite a big fan of. But but Zach, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I I like to see Robinson come in for he for me is the the natural choice with James Anderson and Mark Wood playing. Um, well, Mark Wood had quite a big bowling workload in the last Test match. I think he bowled the most overs he's ever bowled in the Test match innings in the first innings against India, and then James Anderson played two Test matches back to back. Um, it's probably about time that he got a rest and there's only a short time between the last test match and this one. So the next big seamer for England to come in is Ollie Robinson. Um, the question is whether England pick another seamer. However, Ben Stokes saying that he's bowling uh, or he's potentially bowling is interesting. He's been bowling at a hundred percent for a couple of training sessions, not pulling up too sore. Um, and he's kind of, going against physio's advice really um in in potentially bowling but him bowling just completely changes the balance of that england side yeah as we've said it's a massive boost for england having him bowling um he's only three wickets away from being only the third cricketer to score six thousand runs and take 200 wickets behind gary sobers and jack Callis. so that would be incredible honors for him to get that uh, but with him bowling it means that england can afford to bring show bashir who i think had a pretty good debut uh, back into that side. And for me, he offers a little bit more control than Joe Root, um, for example, as that off-spinning option. Um, he's definitely more of that first-choice spinner than than Joe Root. So I'm excited to but, see Shoah Bashir come in and then Ollie Robinson as well as as the main seamer. So do you think Shoah Bashir comes in and Anderson gets rested then for the fourth test as well? Yes, I, so, I see that happening. Um, okay. Yeah. And then that gives England those, yeah, Shoah Bashir... Hartley and Rahana are sort of the main three spinners with a bit of support from Joe Root. As as you say, if if Ben Stokes can bowl, you know, a lengthy spell, that that does help the the balance there because it means that, you know, he's got that extra bit of pace. Well, mm. did before his injury. Yeah. Then the, the likes of Robinson and, and and Anderson. Yeah. The one thing that I I'm a little bit tentative of when it comes to Stokes bowling is Ollie Robinson is a line and length bowler. That's how he gets his wickets. He can break partnerships. Um, I think he's a great person to bring in. Um, ben Stokes, if he starts bowling, I'm just a bit cautious of, is he going to do like a a six-over spell of just short pitch bowling? Um, Probably. Uh, like that's, that's the sort of thing. In the match situation, is he going to think, oh, we need to bowl short now. I'm the man to do it. That's kind of what I'm a bit worried about because the last thing we want is him to re-injure himself. Um, you kind of think use Ben Stokes. Ben Stokes should use himself as he'd use Mark Wood coming in for two or three over over bursts to try and break a partnership, for example, um, if he does bowl. So, yeah, I think um, Ollie Robinson for me. I think he bowled really well um, in England's last or last tour of the subcontinent, which was in Pakistan. I think he averaged something like twenty one and was really quite um, e economical. So. I like to see Ollie Robinson in there. As you say, he's not really that enforcer bowler though, which England would miss with. So, you know, the pace of Mark Wood. Yeah. It probably would go to um, Stokes to do that role. So that's 
probably the only area of concern for me with Stokes's fitness. And then if it's all going terribly for for Shah Bashir, Ollie Robinson can always, you know, box some handy off spin. Yeah, as true. You saw in, the, in the pink ball test in, yeah. in, in Australia. Yeah, that would be a nightmare. Um, but we've got plenty of spin options that I don't think uh, Robinson necessarily has to do that, which is which yeah. is handy. Um, yeah, fingers crossed. You know what I'm really impressed with it, with England though is that even though they seem to be down and out, look, they're two one down in in the series. They just have this um, unwavering belief that yeah. they're gonna win the Test match, which I don't know if it's if it's warranted or not. Um, but yeah, that's just it's just this this belief that that, that I'm seeing from them. Yeah, well, I, in a way, we've kind of got to look at it in perspective and be realistic. At the start of the series, when we did our big preview, we'd said England would do well to win a Test match, and They've already won one in the first test match. So that anything that happens in the rest of the test series, it doesn't matter how badly England might lose these next two test matches. The scoreline will still read 4-1. Um, it's not really... England will somehow, as England do, take some form of moral victory. Um, although they couldn't really do that in the last one. So no, it'll be interesting to see. England obviously have more areas to improve. Middle order batting being a big one. Um, can their spin increase its consistency? People like Tom Hartley, Shah Bashir, um, can they, and Rahan Ahmed, can they be a bit more consistent with their lines and lengths, reduce the number of bad balls that they bowl? Um, that That's what we want to see out of this test series because it's still a relatively young side. We're still relatively early in baseball. I mean, it's been, well, I say baseball. Brandon McCullum and Ben Stokes in, in charge. It's been it's not been too long that's happened. So there's still learning curves. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how England come up against India, who are still seem very strong, seem unbeatable in their own conditions. Um, but we've seen certain gaps where we think India could be beaten. So be interested to see how India respond. Um, but we are going to be bringing you reactions to as many of the days play as we can. Test match starts this Friday. So if you aren't subscribed yet, click the button. Helps us out a lot. If you want to, uh, then you can further support the channel by becoming a member. Uh, if you want to follow us on social media, all the links are in the link tree down below. And if you've enjoyed this video, we'd appreciate a like. It's free to do, and it goes a long way to supporting this channel. So thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you soon.